Um, uh, their, their senior guards just took advantage of our guards, and they just uh, they played at a different speed, uh, uh, and they just we we couldn't keep them in front and then uh you know we tried going zone a couple times and um and uh, uh we were even worse at zone so um but at the end of the day if we're only going to shoot uh nine free throws like we did the other night then we got to make 14 15 threes to offset uh, we went six for 21 so um you know, we if we're not going to if we're not going to attack the rim and play physical at the rim uh, then you got to make your jump shots and when you don't uh, you're not going to win. Right, I think that's back to that game seven where you make free throws. Is there a common theme you're seeing from that? Guys just not attacking the rim with the equally simple. Uh, next question. Of the guys on, on the Auburn team that you have to prepare for, Cambridge probably isn't in the top three or four. What, what did he do tonight when he had to look at Give that young man credit. He's been shooting the three at 20% for the year. And we, you know, he was on our Scotter report. We, we, we put him up there and we said he was a capable three-point shooter because he will shoot them. They just weren't going in. Uh, they went in for him today. But then again, he got a lot of wide open looks because we couldn't keep their guards in front of us. And uh, and we got what got him going were the back-to-back -back threes against our zone. Uh, our backline guys did a real poor job in their coverage. Uh, but then again, give him credit. It's uh, uh, He was on our scouting report and he was identified as a, as a capable three-point shooter. That's the wording that we used. And... Uh, um, and he put them down, and you know, uh, because of that, they got away from us. Auburn has a two-step big run in the first half, and the second half they had that run. So what went wrong for you guys offensively, or where you guys couldn't get the ball back? Yeah, we couldn't couldn't pass the ball. The game of basketball is real simple. A team that passes wins. A team that don't pass don't win. They just dug up in us, and so we couldn't pass, and then we couldn't drive either, and. Uh, and you know, going into the game, we wanted to post them. We thought we could have an advantage playing in the paint, uh, but our big guys didn't. Uh, uh, it, it, they they made it hard for us. We, they wouldn't allow us to reverse the basketball. And uh, post up basketball in the NBA happens on the strong side because there's no help side defense. In college, you got to reverse the basketball. You got to pass it. You got to move the ball, and then post it. And uh, we we uh, we were unable uh, uh, with any lineup to ever get ball movement until uh, we can play through post-ups. So we had to get away from the post-ups and, like I said, go to opening the court so we can drive. Like they did us. They opened the court and they drove us. Well, we couldn't drive down. So it's the, they won or we lost. Tenth, they opened the game one for ten. What did you think the way you guys started defensively? Was it just a matter of them missing shots? You figured eventually they would hit some of these looks. Yeah. How did you feel like how you started them? We, we handled. I don't think they were as aggressive uh, early. Uh, and we handled those little, I don't know what, I, I call them rubs. That's when the two guards kind of like flip the body each other and just kind of cross up top. We handled that a little bit better. Uh, uh, but then they're senior guards, and, and that's what you get when you got old guards. They, As the game goes on, they start feeling it, and they start getting a feel for when they can go at you and who to go at. Uh, and they picked on, I'm not going to say who, but they picked on guys on our team. That's the guy that they went after every single time, and, uh, if you can't keep them out of the paint, you're going to struggle uh, to to defend them because then they start shooting catch and shoot threes. They uh, McCormick and, and Dowdy do a great job of getting in there and passing the ball. Uh, and then, but our our breakdowns came. I made a couple subs and we went zone uh, for a couple possessions and we gave that young man like I can't remember his Cambridge. name right now Cambridge. We gave him back to back threes and that brought the building into the game. And then we got affected. Uh, we we played. I like playing fast. I don't mind the score being 80 to 67. Uh, but we got caught up taking quick shots rather than playing off the bounce and getting that ball in the paint the way we spoke about doing it. What kept you all from being able to pass? Them. They just got above us. And, you know, we got backdoor plays. And our guards, their, their guards played at a certain speed. And our guards never answered the bell. So we couldn't pass on offense. We couldn't drive on offense. And defensively, you know, they just kind of run their, their little weave up there and they just pick on the guy they wanted. They eventually got him up there and they go at him. And um, that's real good coaching by Bruce and execution by his team. How close is, is Keyshawn to getting back? And what did his, what, how did you guys have to kind of combat his absence? And obviously, he's starting well. Yeah. Um, uh, Wildens has been playing fairly well for us and he gives us a presence at the rim. I didn't want Mike getting in foul trouble. Uh, dealing with Wiley early in the game. 
so I thought that was the right move to go to start the game. Uh, and then when they go small, I usually went small back to uh, uh, our four guard lineup there. But um, uh, Keyshawn's supposed to do some stuff tomorrow at practice. Uh, how much and all that, I'll find that out. But he's he's cleared to do some stuff in practice, and and how he manages tomorrow will determine how the next day plays out. Uh, he's dealing with an ankle sprain. And that's just straight up pain tolerance. It's uh, uh, I'm I'm uh, I don't live in a. I, when I was a kid, they'd make me play with his ankle, but times are different now, and I don't do that. I I know why my body's all beat up now because they made me play with bad ankles and bad knees. Um, we live in a different time, and it's not my place as a coach to be telling somebody when they're healthy enough to play. That's his job to to be at peace with his body so he can get out there and contribute. Yeah, Frank, you're obviously a, a little bit disappointed in your, in your ability to get to the free, free throw line. Is it the aggressiveness? Is it the timing of the aggressiveness? Is it when you want to attack? Now that you're uh, the right time? You've covered my team for eight years. You've seen us play almost every game we've played in the last eight years. Have you ever seen us go through a stretch where we shoot a total of 17 free throws in two games? So I, that's, I mean, we got to be better.